Welcome to Brigadoon Radio. Brigadoon is the place where entrepreneurs and thought leaders discuss emerging issues shaping commerce and culture. Hey, Brigadoon Radio, we're here with Nigella McLean from the great state, the Empire State of New York. Spent some time in the UK. She is an artist, an athlete, all around, probably one of the more interesting people I've met. Certainly more, much more cooler than me. So wherever you look, conversation about design, art, AR, pop culture, we'll go from there. So, Najila, how is it going? It's going good, Mark. How are you doing? I butchered your name again. Najalia. Yes, Najalia. <laughs> Sorry, Najalia. Where does that, first off, where does Najalia come from? Honestly, um, I know that. a good my- story. It's kind of like a cheesy one, and it, it kind of lets people down, but I figure it's funny to tell. So <laughs> my father wanted a boy named Nigel, and that clearly didn't work out. So this was like the secondary name if it became a girl, so it just added a feminine ending part. So Nigel. I love it. That's so funny. I actually have a similar story. So my mom, I was actually named William for two days, named after mm-hmm. my dad, but my yeah. mom didn't, wasn't down with that. And if I was going to be a girl, she was going to call me Marsha, so M-A-R-C-I-A. So I am Mark. MRC, which is very, there aren't too many marks in North America. So yeah, we've got, that's great. We get the same kind of origin story. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so tell me about, um, you're a graphic designer, artist. I mean, how do you describe yourself? I would describe myself as a creative designer because I think like one, it, it took me a while to know like what would my title actually be since I like to dive into so many elements, but yeah. I would definitely say I'm a creative designer because creatives like tell stories. And I'm a big passion. I'm passionate about storytelling. Like that's me for a fact. But I've also yeah. like to make stuff. So that's why I like put creative designer together. I think no, that's- I love it. Cause I see like when I look at your work, um, it does seem like you're, I mean, you're almost like a strategist in a sense, but you can use different tools to tell the story. I mean, you do voiceover work, you do some modeling, you do photography, you're an artist, you draw. I mean, it's like you got a lot of skills and that seems very unique i think in the design field no Mm -hmm. yeah definitely um i know for a fact when i used to like apply for jobs and vice versa that a lot of typical companies always look for the like graphic designer (laughs) which is like web code maybe a bit of like pizzazz in what you can make and i'm like well i don't like coding and i've done coding i just don't like it so i wanted to make sure that whatever like career path i'd go that is something that i love to do at least something central around what I love to do. So I was always like, I was doing internships. I did freelancing and then, you know, eventually like nailed the big job, got a position with media monks as a junior creative. And that's been like a really good experience for me. Cause I've seen how big companies now work and it's given me that much greater experience, which I needed the whole time. It does seem though. So I work more in kind of like, I would say traditional communications, public affairs. And I've always been like very platform like platform agnostic, like I don't really care how people get their information. And I've seen these different, you know, whether just flat out like a TV interview, radio, what we're doing here, like I don't really care how people get the message, but it does seem to communicate now, you have to be agile and use different tools to get the word out. Is that your experience? Yeah, I think definitely nowadays. um, If there's one, one thing I've learned when I got, not even, even if I didn't get the position, what I was told by like past people that interviewed me, for a role was that they were starting to kind of change up the way they were hiring, which I was really happy about because a lot of these times, like, especially people around like early and like late twenties. So I'm in late twenties now, but it's difficult when we're competing with people that are like 20 years in the business. And, you know, I think the one plus, yeah, yeah. (laughs) The one plus like we would have is that we're, we're going to be a bit more knowledgeable of the new trends and stuff that are coming out. The only difference is we're not professionally experienced in terms of with businesses yet. But I like that they're being companies are being more open minded and taking youth in because of their yeah. talent and the direction they're going with their talent rather than, oh, but this person has 20 years. So like or 10 years here or even just like a year, if they have a year more than you, they'll take that person. But now they're changing their ways about it and going by portfolio and like strength and quality of character and how you, you know, pick up work fast. It seems to be like working with, um, you know, younger people is that you all have a lot more skills in the sense, like you're much more adapted to creating maybe an original piece of content and repurposing it or expanding it 
or combining different elements. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's like an amazing skill to have that I think my, like my contemporaries don't have, like they're very rigid. Um, but taking content and expanding it and using it in different platforms is really exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, and also like when you're an artist, the one thing I've kind of also learned too during like my creative journey is that there are so many tools, like so many tools you could use, not even just the main ones from like Adobe, but there's like other softwares too. And I've grown a love for virtual reality after I finished my master's at Northumbria University in um, Newcastle in the UK. But um, yeah, so when I learned virtual reality and like kind of combining that with storytelling, I was like, you know, I really like mixed media arts. I like combining and showcasing all these different skills and layering them because I think that creates something new. And I've noticed a rise too, is a lot of people are like starting to combine that sort of mixed media push, even in brands. Brands are starting to really utilize VR for their storytelling, or even if it's for a campaign and even AR, XR, you know, because of COVID. Oh, wait, wait. What, yeah, what XR. is XR? <laughs> what is XR? I don't even, I'm not XR even. Is the, like, what's XR? Think what's think when you go on a website, right? Okay. That's a whole like, um, XR is like the code, ex- it's like coding mainly, but I would say that's the web experience. So for instance, I know that a lot of um, like fashion companies have been pushing XR a bit more in terms of selling their products. So Coach did something with Keith Haring and they had a whole XR online thing where you could explore the shops and buy in the thing. So it almost felt like a video game in a way, right? Yeah, yeah. I, saw, like, I think Burberry just did their show maybe on Twitch, right? Is that kind of a similar or is yep. that? Okay, yep. perfect. So it's a whole like com- computer to user experience, right? So we call it like XR, which is like user experience type um, terminology, I would say. But so yeah. Like when you, when well, you start, like say you're, you're working with a brand, like say Burberry or Coach or whatever, and mm-hmm. they come to you and they're like, we want to sell this handbag. And then as a designer, what's your, like, what are you thinking? Are you thinking about how the consumer is going to receive this? Is it almost like you're coming from a consumer mindset? Is it, you know you're saying? Like, is the consumer more in control? Because they get to decide how they want the information. Or is it still think, brands like pushing? Yeah. yeah, I think what what it comes down to is like the brand identity. So that's kind of like what's the brand message and what would why would they need to do this kind of thing? And it have to make sense. So obviously not every brand's going to do XR, extra VR stuff. But if it makes sense based on what they're trying to do with that product, then yeah, you push it that way. You can't just like, hey, let's just put all our stuff in um, VR and just sell it. Like there has to be a strategy behind it. And you need to like really consider, okay, what is the audience? What's the audience going to gear towards more? Are the, is your people buying products more online or in the stores? You know what I mean? And that, that's a conversation too that a lot of, I think people working behind the scenes consider. And also like, you know, and some people, they just do it as a trial, like a test. And I think some of those fashion companies did do it as a test to see how it goes. Cause it's so yeah. new from them. Like you don't expect coach to do like an XR virtual exploring through um, handbags. I was like, kind of like one of the first couple I've seen them do. And it's huge. Um, I think. Cool. Um, I'll have to check that out. Mm-hmm. Tell me about, um, yeah, so VR, AR, I tend to think, I mean, I have no idea, but <laughs> I think it does seem, there's something going on, right? Like clearly like the smartphone is, we've kind of reached our like maximum use of the smartphone. It does seem like, you know, wearables are coming online, the use of glasses. Um, I mean, do you see AR winning or VR or is it gonna be a combination of both? Um, I think AR. I think AR first is going to come because you have to think like, you know, Snapchat filters when filters kind of started to become like a big thing and it's growing more now because now like on Instagram filters, people can like buy and make their own too. Right. So like if they're trying to like, I don't know, like host an event, they can have their own filter at that event and they can like, I think pay, oh no, I think Snapchat does this. You can pay for like a certain circumference of the area people are in. in right, your location, right. And that's where the filter would show up. Which is quite like, you know, if you're doing a brand and you want to add a bit of like AR depth to it, that's a perfect way. I guess with in, with Pokemon too, there was an aspect yep. where you could like drive traffic to certain stores or, you know, the, I don't understand Pokemon either, but, you know, there's like the gamification of like, hey, you've got to go here, which would take you to certain stores, correct? Yeah, yeah, on Pokemon Go. Yeah, like when that came out, I think that was definitely really cool because I don't think they've ever done 
no one's done something like that yet in terms of like we can actually go out and like catch pokemon more like the idea behind it like there hasn't been like oh we can explore all these places and find these things so kind of like yeah people got their phone but they're actually like i have friends like go walk outside for like over an hour and just go catch pokemon (laughs) but it gets people outside so i guess it's kind of like a plus because if you want to go find something you'd have to leave your house and go get it because it'll tell you and it does seem too like location is you know if you tell me kind of where you go or what you do i mean obviously in covid we're not going anywhere but um if you tell me about your kind of daily patterns i can learn a lot about you it's almost like location is more important yeah i think i think when they first started it it was more like get people out but then they had to consider again not everyone's out and walking about like that so i think they simplified it and more like okay you can like explore like the game capability rather than you physically being there so i think that was that was definitely a change they made which i said was good because not everyone can migrate like that all the time so you are very i mean you're you've got two master's degrees in the space which is super interesting um i think what's it like to be a strategist and i mean there's new tools like popping up every day there's new apps you know People are like, oh, this is like the latest shiny object. Let's go do this. Um, <laughs> how do you balance all that? Um, I guess it would depend on what like my creative feelings are. And then plus like what my what I'm planning to do. So for instance, when I start hearing about Clubhouse, right? One of like the bit, best <laughs> new big apps out there. And I was like, oh, I'm not sure about it. Because to me, it seemed like all oh, this extra Hollywood app that we're just whatever. Right. I'll give it, let me let it, let it marinate for me. And then if I'm really interested, I'll ask about it. And I let it sit. And then when I was hearing more positives about like the art community and like meeting, you know, other professionals, like, you know what, like it really, for an app like that, I think it depends what you want to get out of it. Like some people go on there and they have wild conversations about crazy stuff that I would never see on this talk, (laughs) but like, you know what I mean? Um, But then there's also informative ones. And I was like, you know, I think it is how you make it how you make use of it type of app. And I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna figure out how to get on there and you can only get on there by invite. And luckily one of my friends had an invite and she brought me on it. And then I was like, let me find like VR digital art people and I can learn more about this stuff. And now I've like met this whole community of people and professionals and they've like kind of given me great advice and like projects that I'd want to push forward with. So it kind of helps yeah. like my outside work networking and it's perfect because you can actually like either engage with it and ask to talk, or it's like almost like its own podcast where you can just yeah. listen to people talk while you're doing work. It's great. It is. Um, yeah. It's funny. Cause I'm like, I'll Google all Android. So I can't even get into the clubhouse world. And it's always, um, you know, in my world too, I wrestle with people where they get obsessed with a certain tactic or, mm-hmm. you know, they're like, Oh, we would go out like all in on LinkedIn. I want to do a blog a day or something crazy. And, you know, they haven't figured out the strategy or they haven't even figured out like they, they're like, how, and then I'm like, how are you going to carve out, you know, 60 minutes a day to write this? And mm-hmm. it is, um, it's a challenge. So you're not jumping around all the time. Like when you, when somebody approaches a graphic designer or a creative strategist, what is your advice? Like what's the best way to work with someone like you? Uh, I guess the best way to work is like, just speak with what you're passionate about. You know, because whatever we make or whatever I'm making for you, like, I want that to be like something that reflects you. So I think that's what ends up being like kind of like maybe the sporty emotional side of me is like, I'd want this piece to be personal to you, but also created in a way that would enhance what you're representing. Right. And I think that's very important is that whatever design, even if it's like a tiny logo, if that emits emotion for you personally and reflects who you are in your image, then it's a great design. I Perfect. think like, you know, a lot of people go like technical where I'm like, well, I think it's more personal and emotional. Right. Let's so. do a pick and roll. See what I just did there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> pick and roll. So yeah. You're, you're a basketball player, a point guard. Um, I love it. I mean, basketball, I mean, is there a more culturally important sport? I mean, I guess we debate maybe soccer, but it's certainly the NBA, the National Basketball Association, the WNBA, I mean, it is a cultural force. And the quality of athletes is amazing. You know, also the shoes alone, like blow me away. And the fact that when all these players now walk into the arena, they're photographed, you know, and like their clothing, what is going on with basketball and, and culture and design? 
Are we, is it, just, it seems like we're just at the beginning of something crazy. Yeah. Um, I definitely think with what's happened now and what's great about, you know, design and sports from what I've seen. I think that was, that was the inspiration that actually made me want to become a creative and a designer or even just getting into that field was seeing like advertisements from Nike and all that stuff. And I was like, this is really cool. Like this is the art that I found cool, not yeah. necessarily fine arts, but I was like, I like whatever they're doing. Yeah. So that's what I dive into. And when I got to like learn about like um their brand strategy and even just their stories, like how the Nike logo even happened. It's like really intriguing and interesting. Like it was made from like a college student and like, you know, luckily she ended up fighting for more money but later on, but that's like a different topic. But it's just the idea that there's so much depth behind how companies get made, especially in sports. And I believe that with the technology happening now, it's only going to get better and it's only going to get more immersive. And who knows, like we may even get some crazy, like, like I was talking about AR, XR, it might even skyrocket for how we buy things. We may even to be at a point where it may pop up us in front of us and we can see this shoe digitally. That would yeah. be insane, but we are going in that direction, I feel. No, it is amazing. Um, yeah, the shoes alone, like, I mean, I'm not a total sneakerhead. I mean, but I don't know. They're amazing. And obviously, I'm a washed up soccer player. And I joke now, like, some of the shoes that are coming out, you know, I would have scored 50 to 100 goals a season with these shoes. Anyways, um, let's talk about like athletes as their own kind of image and like their own kind of design motif. And, you know, even the way they kind of curate their look and feel, it does seem like there's more pressure on athletes to obviously excel on court, but also off court, the way they communicate with fans or even if they have their own brand. Can you talk about that? Um, yeah, I think some that come to mind, obviously LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, they all like have very, very strong brands. And then even like, WNBA is still kind of on a rise a bit, but I'm like a big fan of like Sue Bird and a couple of the athletes, Diana, Tarasi, um, Skylar Diggins. Like they push in a more like the immersive avenue and like connecting with these NBA players. And that's kind of how they kind of uplift each other. But going back to like the main leading guys for NBA that I think reflect and do well in their brand. So like for Kyrie, he really pushes like his personal stories in terms of me when I see his designs. And he's always constantly like reflecting back to him how he's a spiritual person. And I think that's where you get these cool, like kind of like the eye and like the different like sketch designs. I mean, he did a collab with like um, SpongeBob. Do you know what I mean? So he really pushes <laughs> that like he wants to be fun and adventurous. And that's what he pushes in the styles of his shoe that come out with um, the other people he's working with. So I do, that's what I'm saying. Like when it comes to creativity, I think story is so important. You know, LeBron has the, the King story, like the lion, because he came into the league and dominated. Like yeah. this fresh new guy that like changed, you know, when he came in, he was already being compared to Michael Jordan. Like that's how crazy the guy came. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Like, cause no one's like, well, we can't stop him. Not that easily. So, you know, it's, it's interesting the way they can brand something based off how, they've built their career and what's, what's important to them. So how do you stay on top of all this stuff? Like where, where are some go-to sites or sources or yeah, clubhouses? Like uh, where can I go to be cooler? <laughs> where can you go to be cool. <laughs> Honestly. Um, I love Instagram. I think Instagram always cool, shows really cool stuff in general, like just people sharing even concepts or just ideas. But um, I always look at, like Bleacher Report, because they share a lot of just different ideas. And even if you just go on like Nike's website, they always have like their own stories too as well, like their blog. Yeah. They're always talking about stuff. Um, even Jordan's page, from the design perspective, they have their own like designers and directors to having those discussions. LinkedIn, like there, there's so many places you can find information nowadays that like anywhere is your best bet. It's just a matter of like meeting the right thing that you want at the right time. How do you as a designer, like strategist decide, you know, I mean, obviously you want to, I assume like, obviously you're pretty prolific, you're sharing stuff. And how do you wrestle with like what I should share? What should I keep private? This is a great idea. I don't want anybody to get it. I mean, it must <laughs> be an internal challenge. Yeah. Um, it, it's tough because sometimes I'll get really excited about wanting to share something, but then in the back of my mind, I'm like, I have to be kind of, a w like remind my subconscious that 
this can't really be discussed yet. Or I tell myself, you know what? This doesn't need to be talked about. Or this can marinate and wait type thing, yeah. depending on how that goes. Because I don't know, I'm a full, full believer in not sharing everything. Uh, there's some things I just actually like to keep for myself. And I think as people, it's good to have things for yourself. Not everyone has to know whatever you're doing. That's why I was like, social media is great, but like no one needs to know what I'm doing 24 seven. Like yeah. it's not necessary. And I think we have to kind of remind ourselves that, and it's hard when we're so engrossed into this social world now that everyone needs to know every second what we're doing when that's not true. Like we're still people and you know, your health comes first and your mental health comes first. So it's good to have that privacy. So before we wrap up, um, mm -hmm. you spent some, I think two years in the UK, which is fantastic. Um, a lot of people that are part of the Brigadoon community or new traveling and whatnot, what are some cool places that are kind of off the beaten path that, you know, non Big Ben touristy stuff that Yankees <laughs> or Americans should go see in the UK? What were you kind of surprised uh, by? Or? I definitely the places I've been, I would definitely say Nottingham. That was where I first went. That's become like my little home away from home for <laughs> sure. I met some of like the closest people there um, that I've met in my life. And it's just like, it's just like a different feel, kind of not big main city, but it's just like, you get to see different bits of the culture and the more traditions as well. Um, Newcastle, that's where I went my second year. That's a really cool, small city. And you get to like explore all these places and it's not far from Scotland. So it's like, I think only an hour and a half train ride from Newcastle. So it's like, boom, you can do that and tackle Scotland. Yeah. Um, Newcastle is like the yeah. North. That's like real UK, right? I mean, it's like proper weather. Yeah, I would say, I say the difference is the accents. Obviously, everyone, the more north you go, I think the more <laughs> diverse the accents get. But it's cool, like, you know, because everyone's got their own thing. That's what I kind of liked about being in England. Like, I noticed that when I went south and like London, they had that very similar to New York City vibes and like different um, people of different backgrounds, but more like that urban culture. And then the more like Midland you go, it was like very multicultural but mixed urban and country-ish then yeah. when you're real north it's like a lot of like country area ish <laughs> but it's just north it's just northern so north and south are just different like 360 but they're still all fun they all have their own energy and it's nice to be around Ajila, before we close up tell me like what's what's going on like what are you kind of excited about what are you working on what's interesting uh i'll say what i'm excited about is i have a show in august that's going to be in london in a small gallery i just can't think of the name of the top of my head but yeah that's so amazing. i got invited yeah so i got invited to um submit to that and it's going to be me and a couple other artists who are actually like from the uk so i think i'm the only american in it which is quite funny but <laughs> she like the lady i talked to she really liked my work and i'm going to try to come up with a vr experience because i think everyone else is doing fine arts and print so i want to do like something immersive because that's going to be kind of what I stand for in terms of the mixed reality realm. Yeah. And yeah, that's like so cool. that's my big exciting thing that I'm thinking about for sure. Is How can people best find you on the interwebs? Uh, best find me. I would definitely say through Instagram, you can find me at Nige underscore designs underscore, or you can find me on my website with all my information at www.nigeliakm.com and has all my stuff on there. I love it. Nigelia, you are easily one of the coolest people I've met in a while. I need hey. to, uh, I'm so glad you reached out and agreed to be on Brigadoon Radio. This is so cool. Maybe, uh, I don't know. We could, I have a great, I actually tried to go to graphic design school. I went to try to go to the Center for Creative Studies in Detroit, uh, but my portfolio was rubbish. They told me I should take my talents <laughs> elsewhere. So I'm a, I'm a huge fan of designers. So this is so cool. Thanks for making the time. Awesome, Mark. Thanks for having me. And yeah, definitely. We'd love to do this again sometime for sure. Thanks for listening to Brigadoon Radio. Brigadoon is where entrepreneurs and thought leaders gather. For more information, please visit thebrigadoon.com.